This video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Zotac Gaming. What's up legends and welcome back to the channel. It's time for a GPU upgrade. Here we've got the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Solid Core OC graphics card. We're gonna go ahead and see what we get inside the box, see what sort of details there are on this magnificent GPU, and then of course get into some games and see how it really performs. And then later on in the video, with the release of the 50 series, we will see, is it now time for you to upgrade? So first up, as always, the unboxing. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we get inside. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but there's nothing quite like unboxing a brand new GPU. Some things to note here on the box, 16 gigabytes, iStorm 3.0, Spectra, and of course, this is the Solid Core OC edition of the GeForce RTX 5070 Ti from Zotac Gaming. Some key features on the back, then a little bit more detail with the iStorm, Spectra, etc. But overall, really nice packaging. Opening it up, you'll find a Zotac Gaming box inside that's housed in the GPU itself. A little pouch with some instructions and underneath that, the GPU. Now this card looks absolutely gorgeous with the black and gold theme. It's a pretty beefy unit with three fans on the bottom, super nice design on top and overall in fact. As we saw on the box, it comes with iStorm 3.0, which is Zotac's advanced GPU cooling. Reinforced metal mid-frame design, we also get blade link fans which are stronger and provide a quieter spin with steadier airflow, which is nice. There's a Zotac Gaming branding RGB light here, which I'm always a fan of RGB, who isn't? And there's actually a little safety light as well, which I will show you once it's plugged in. Three ports with three display ports and one HDMI. Then on the opposite side of that, it definitely looks like it's going to help with some ventilation here. You also get a metal support bracket, which is nice as I have had GPU sag in the past. And you get a bundle multi eight pin cable, which keep things a little bit tidier when installed. So let's go ahead and get this GPU installed inside my system. This is how you can use the metal support bracket if you wanted to. However, because this GPU comes with extra support, the three screws here do a great job with support overall. So I'm not using the bracket just yet. Now it's installed and powered on, you can see the little safety light here Green indicates we're good to go, and if there was an issue, it would show up red. I've downloaded Firestorm, which is Zotac's own software, that you can use to monitor and even tune your GPU. There's going to be no tuning in today's video, but if that is something that you'd like to see, then let me know in the comments, and perhaps we could do a follow-up video where we could see how far we can push this thing. In here, however, you can also control the fan speed, and of course, everybody's favorite, the color of the RGB light. Before we go ahead and play some games, I'm just going to run a performance test on Marvel Rivals, just to give you an idea of what the performance is like straight out of the box. Settings in the game are all on Ultra, DLSS is on with 4x frame generation to get those extra frames we get from the 50 series, and it's in 4K resolution. Now I know frame generation isn't everyone's favourite thing, but personally, when I'm gaming, I want the best visuals, and the highest frame rates I can get, so I'm all for it. And honestly, with Nvidia's new Blackwell architecture powering features like DLSS4 and Reflex2, it handles AI-driven tools incredibly well. In my experience, it just works seamlessly. Games are responsive, smooth, graphics are fantastic, so for me, it really is a no-brainer. This is the test report using DLSS4, and as you can see, we get some crazy good frames, and just awesome performance overall. We can go ahead and compare the same test with ultra settings, but without frame generation, and I think this just shows why for me, I'm turning on DLSS whenever I can, but I do know that this is a personal preference. I'm going to demo some random games here, just so you can kind of get an idea of how well the card performs in different games. Every game shown is using the highest graphics settings available, along with DLSS and four times frame generation where available. There are well over 100 games that support DLSS 4, and you can find lists available online from Nvidia themselves. Here is some Doom the Dark Ages gameplay, a visually awesome game, but this is running their Ultra Nightmare graphic setting, which is the highest available. 
DLSS is turned on with four times frame generation and pretty much maxed out in 4K. And as you can see, the gameplay is not only smooth, but also looks incredible. And the frames are between 80 to 110 on average. So it's pretty impressive considering this is maxed out on 4K resolution. Microsoft Flight Sim, one of the most demanding games I've ever played, also runs pretty smoothly on my 49 inch monitor. This however is 1440p with mostly high settings and again getting some pretty comfortable frame rates, well above what I have had in the past so it's pretty impressive straight out of the box. It's a certain improvement over the 4070 Ti I was running previously with increased frames across the board, but I think the 50 series are a more worthwhile upgrade if coming from something like the 30 series, especially with the Nvidia Blackwell architecture powering features like DLSS 4 and Reflex 2, you are going to get a big improved gaming experience. I'm going to put some images up here just to give you a visual idea of the sort of differences between the two series of cards and their performance showing the sort of leap in power between the two generations. Depending on what sort of build you're going for and of course what sort of budget you have available, there are of course different GPUs available in the 50 series lineup from the 5050 all the way up to the 5090. However, of course, everything you've seen in today's video has been with the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Solid Core OC Edition card. Now, I play a pretty wide variety of games and some slightly older ones where I don't get to make use of things like frame generation. However, the raw power of this card has been a nice improvement and given me more frames across the board on games that I play from things like Holdfast, Chivalry 2, and then of course you get things like Doom the Dark Ages, Call of Duty, Valorant, Marvel Rivals, and many more where I get to make use of the AI powered tools like DLSS 4 and Reflex 2. Overall, it's a very good looking GPU that would suit most builds, I think. I'm still really digging the black and gold theme, and even though I'm more of a white and black build, I actually think it fits in quite nicely. The Firestorm software is a nice plus, and I might go ahead and explore some of the overclocking options in here. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. And then of course, the GPU is powering my games exactly as I'd expect, so overall, I'm very happy with both the looks and performance of this card. If you are looking for an upgrade to your build and you are eyeing up your next GPU, I would definitely recommend the Nvidia 50 series lineup, especially with the cards from Zotac Gaming. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and if there is anything else you'd like me to dive into, test out or showcase like overclocking the card even further, then go ahead and let me know down below in the comments and I'll see what I can do. A huge thanks to Zotac Gaming for sending this one out and a big thanks to you for sticking to the end of this video. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.